Hey there, Postal here. Today we are taking out the P1056. We are up against Crash Bandicoot. It's gonna say Bandicoot. Caught me off guard there. VB10, great tier seven heavy fighter, but it's got some things. Uh, this plane has some things that the VB10, and actually a lot of planes at this tier heavy fighters, I should say, lack. Uh, let's talk about. Well, let's just talk about some of the things here, huh? Um, we have a lot of the things that stand, a lot of things that people remember about this plane is it has four 20 mil cannons on the front here. You got your Hispanos. Quintessential British 20 mil Hispanos, hard hitting, excellent all arounders, right? You've also got these incredibly heavy hitting 40 millimeter cannons set up right on the side. Uh, oh, there's the other one, there we go. Those in combination really hit enemy planes very, very hard. Um, but you may have noticed I've also got two bombs I just dropped. But wait a minute, Postal, you still have eight freaking rockets ready to go. And that's right. This plane is really, really good at air to ground combat. It's something that I think is, I, well, I don't even think, I know is um, not utilized enough on this line. Um, it starts at the, honestly, it starts at the um, bow fighter, but the bow fighter doesn't need the air to ground armaments to be a good heavy fighter. It really starts in earnest with the Mosquito at tier 6, the Hornet at tier 7, this plane at tier 8. If you're not utilizing the air to ground capabilities of those three planes, you are wasting um, some excellent output. The ground armament, uh, so bombs and rockets, take a little bit more than two and a half minutes to reload. I've got mine down to a little bit more than two minutes, 130 seconds or so. And the combination of bombs and rockets and your ability to melt down enemy aircraft can completely change battles. But if you're not using the bombs and rockets on this plane, then you're just not, you're not using your full capabilities. The fact of the matter is this plane is so much more unique than just the way it looks. At tier eight, there's nothing else like it. There's nothing, no other heavy fighter that can put out this volume of air to ground armor. Go ahead, look. I promise, I already have. You've got the Pancake with two tiny Tims that puts out roughly 9,000 damage. Um, it takes three freaking minutes to reload, right? You have the 262 that has two, it starts off stock with two bombs. Well, not stock, but, you know, not fully upgraded with two bombs. Am I going to flip over eventually here? Holy crap, that took forever, didn't it? Um... Concentrate here. There we go. Um, and then all the premiums have no freaking ground armament at all. The BBP 203, the XP 58. Two great planes in their own right, but no ability to, you know, actually do any kind of damage to ground targets. And so you want to take advantage of that. You want to take advantage of its uniqueness and of its output. Let's go ahead and take advantage of these 40 millimeter cannons. Doesn't take long. That actually took longer than I thought it would. I wasn't aiming properly with my 40 millimeter cannons. Look how quickly freaking bombers just melt. Everything melts. Yeah, I've overheated my 40 millimeter cannons, but I've still got those four 20 millimeter millimeter Hispanos. Uh, what I shouldn't be doing is what I am doing right now, which is turning. His engine's knocked out. That's the only reason I'm turning back on this guy. This plane's biggest weakness is its uh, its very, very poor maneuverability, even for a heavy fighter. It um, is very, very poor uh, altitude performance. It's actually very um, reminiscent of the multi-rolls that are at this tier. 
I mean, it has relatively poor, ah, relatively poor um, airspeed. You know, all those bombs and rockets do take away from your airspeed. Um, it's, it's okay. You've got your jets, so that certainly helps. But you need to be aware that you're not a 262. You're not going to have that kind of flexibility. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and just kind of boost away here. back around and so you know that combination turns people off as far as lower than average speed lower than average altitude and piss poor maneuverability we're about to get air supremacy here but the way that I handle that is I'm going to treat this plane like a multi roll honestly I do not I do not um, attack planes that I can't win a one-on-one -on -one engagement with. I do not get myself stuck in in situations where I've got to handle more than one plane at a time, to be honest. If I do that, then I'm setting myself up for failure. This plane is not built for that. And if you're doing that, then you're going to set yourself up for failure as well. I'm trying not to be a lawn dart. Game's gonna be over pretty quickly. I was uh, hoping for a slightly longer game to be able to show you guys, but sometimes they're quick and dirty. And there we go. We got ourselves some McGuire's. Be advised, a line of thunderstorms. Come on! I don't think we could get him at Campbell. We didn't kill ten people. This game was over so quickly. And honestly, so this is the fourth game I've had in this battle. I did get him at Campbell. You know what? <laughs> this is good enough, I guess, to post, right? Um, ten freaking personal points away from uh, from getting fourteen thousand. That's that's just silly. This is the fourth battle I've had today. All of them have been like just solid performances um, because I've been doing this very similar situation. Let's head on back. All right, so we did get eleven frags there. Um, 6,000 damage to both aerial and ground targets. This is honestly one of my more weak ground target games. Uh, first game I had, I did more than 40,000 damage to ground targets. And each consecutive game I had after that, I did right around 20,000, 15 to 20,000. So this one only dropped my two bombs, and apparently I missed one of the bombs. Because each bomb individually does 6,600 damage on average. Um, so I completely missed that bomb. What did I do with my rockets? I don't even know. This game was a complete waste of air to ground ability, but I want I want to really drive the point home that if you're not at least attempting to use your air to ground armament, you're not going to succeed with this plane, or at least you're not going to reach its full potential. Yeah, the guns are great, right? The guns were absolutely stellar in this battle as they are in all battles. There's a 262 on the enemy team. What the hell? Where is he? All right. I would have loved to go against 262. Honestly, the only struggles I've had uh, so with my matches so far today was against a flight of two specialized BVP 203s, which, you know, BVP 203s are not built for any ground armament, so they're completely built for air to air engagement. And I was still able to come out on top with my one-on-one -on -one engagements and they were always together so I always made sure to focus on when one of them turned away from the other one of them um, you know when there was any kind of separation that's when I would pounce and attack Now we lost that battle um, but I definitely was able to come out on top with the engagements like the what three out of five times that I had to come into, into engagement with them again I'm going against two BVP 203s I was able to come out on top we lost the battle though. that was the one battle I've lost today uh, my first battle I had, I got about 12,000 personal points. That's the one where I did the 40,000 ground damage. Um, but that was against all bots. The last battle I just played before this one was 10,000, I think it was. And it was, again, again against all bots. Um, and then there was this battle. I want... I'm going to use this battle just because it does show... I think it shows a better balance of the capabilities of what this plane can do. I didn't even meet the full potential, but you can see where I would have been able to drop bombs where I would have been able to drop rockets. Um, I held off from going to the center because I didn't want to get to air supremacy too quickly there. Um, but 
you want to, when you're in this plane, you want to be paying 100% attention to the map. You want to be dictating the engagement 100%. I was able to come out on top for step VB10 because I came up behind him. Um, I didn't allow anything to come up near me. And if I did, I determined very quickly, was I against a multi-roll? Could I outspeed it? Was I against a heavy fighter? What do I need to do in that kind of situation versus most heavy fighters? If you let them get behind you, you're just kind of, you're toast. There's not a lot you can do in that situation. Hit the spam, the F7 button, um, and hope that one of your friendlies gets on them quick enough. But otherwise... The best rule of thumb in this plane is never let them get behind you. Now, obviously, I've got this plane specialized, but you start off with you start off with these four twenty millimeter cannons, and then you go from there to um, you have the ability, to, and, and you probably should already have two twenty more twenty millimeter Hispanos right alongside it. So you start off with six twenty millimeter Hispanos right out of the gate. I absolutely love that. I was actually afraid to put the 40 millimeter cannons on here because just the, the 620 millimeter cannons was so good. Um, but I put the 40 millimeter cannons on, obviously, and never looked back. The 40 mils are so good at taking out bombers, so good at taking out heavy aircraft, so good at taking out ground attack planes. It's ridiculous. Overall cumulative damage right now is 1,000 per second. Let that soak in at tier 8. Now, granted, that's including the 40 millimeter cannons. Those are most effective 2,100 feet and less. So it's at 650 meters and less. Um, but yeah, this thing is beastly. It is absolutely beastly. The airspeed, obviously, is impacted by the bombs and rockets. I've actually um, you know, it made that even worse with my um, setup. So let's take a quick look at my equipment here. I'm going to start with the bombs and rockets just because that's what I've already been talking about. I put the advanced strength and hard points on here. Yeah, it lowers the um, the speed 4% at this point. But honestly, the airspeed on this plane isn't anything to write home about anyway. And so I thought to myself, you know what? Let's go all in on the bombs and rockets. And that's what I've done. And I've, I've been incredibly, incredibly happy with this setup. Honestly, there's so many good tier 8 heavy fighters, and this is right there in the mix with the planes that I, I enjoy at tier 8. Um, yeah, the, the airspeed is down just a little bit. But it's not so much to where it's impacted the gameplay as far as my playstyle is concerned. And I'm able to get my bombs and rockets dropped every 132 seconds, 134, excuse me. Cumulatively, cumulatively I can do 26,000 damage to the ground in one salvo drop if I'm actually hitting my targets. So again, incredibly, incredibly impactful in a battle. You can swing sectors very easily. You can take down mining facilities on your own in this plane. I've done it, it's crazy, it's awesome, it's fun. From there, I've gone ahead and put the GOA on for my um, forward firing weapon, get my Hispanos and my 40 millimeter cannon firing more quickly, the rate of fire. Yeah, the accuracy's uh, knocked out, but my bonus characteristics, I've got the cooldown rate, I've got the chance of causing fire. I'm actually probably going to re-roll that for critical damage. Because if you look here, I've got chance of critical damage boosted by 15% on my site. And my site is, is there to kind of balance out the poor accuracy that the GOA adds to it. I still get about a 4% buff to my accuracy um, with these two things in combination. Plus I get the... the Rate of fire boosted by 8%. So that's in incredibly impactful, incredibly important in my opinion. Otherwise, there's no point in going all in for any kind of maneuverability on this plane, at least for the way that I play it. So I've added the polished skin, um, and I've added the uprated engine. None of this have I adjusted the bonus characteristics. So obviously the bonus characteristics, the yaw maneuverability on this, I would reassemble it and you know get uh, what can you get instead. Acceleration while diving? Sure, why not? Um, I'd leave the cruise speed alone, but the yaw maneuverability, who the hell cares, at least on my setup here. Um, these both are fine. Like, but, yeah, I mean, they're fine. Whatever. It's not going to make or break the plane. This I would definitely reassemble to get, um, instead of causing fire, which I don't really care about, let's go all in on either the cooldown rate, which would be another 10%, 
Um, actually, that's exactly what it would be. It would be either that or, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just I would re-roll this. This is the worst option because either you could get a 10% chance or a 10% cooldown rate. The cooldown rate is incredibly helpful for your guns, obviously. The 40 millimeter cannons overheat very quickly. But they do so much damage so quickly that I re you didn't you notice they didn't really overheat them very often in this battle. They just they kill so quickly. Um, I've gone all in for you know mitigating the impact to the airspeed that the bombs and rockets have. Got the engine cooling on here. I've also got the improved mixture control. Notice I don't get my engine knocked out very often, so I don't need the engine restart on here. I've also gone ahead and put on improved fragmentation. Uh, that's where I've gotten my extra, um, you know, bombs and rockets boost, so to speak. Instead of having a 24,000 cumulative damage, we have uh, 26,400 cumulative damage. So it, it all adds up. So a lot of talk talking, right? Keep in mind, I've only got a six-point pilot, and I'm currently only using two, four of those points. I'm not really sure where I want to put my additional points here. I moved my pilot from this plane to the P228 and then moved it from the P228 to the Javelin. So I actually restarted this plane with a friggin' zero point pilot and it was still an effective setup. You know, no buffs to the accuracy or the engine power. Um, and so I'm actually going for a third point. I'm either going to do Marksman 1 or Engine Guru 2. I mean, Marksman 2 or Engine Guru 2. I'll figure it out on that day. Uh, right now, I'm kind of, I don't really know. I'm not in a rush because uh, this plane is so good right now. I'm not like, oh, I desperately need to, you know, to, to use two points. I am super tempted to utilize the cruise flight. Normally, I'd recommend aerodynamics expert, but you've only got two equipment slots that actually help um, um, airspeed. And so I typically use aerodynamics expert on a plane that has three slots for, for the airframe and for the engine. So that way you get the most... Um, impact from the aerodynamics expert on a lot of planes i'll put aerobatics expert but it's just uh, using anything for maneuverability on this plane i'm just not doing right now um so that's why i'm waiting so again the the argument could be made i could take um you know put two points here i could take help my accuracy or help my blast radius this might actually be um beneficial my, that might be actually what i go for while i'm in the waiting here um, expert Rocketeer is not what I would use just because I don't use my rockets for air to air, not with this plane. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do the blast radius by 10%. There we go. We are air to ground, right? So let's go ahead and do that. If I decide to, once I get an extra point to, to do Engine Guru 2 or Marksman 2, we'll worry about that later. But this actually makes a lot of sense now that I talk about it out loud. And now my blast radius is just ridiculous. The bombs are now... I didn't even know that. I would have totally done this sooner. I'm an idiot. Call me an idiot in the freaking comments below. I know it. So I can do twenty, almost 29,000 cumulative damage on one bomb and rocket pass. I am an idiot. Dang. Well, oh well. You live and you learn. So just another reason. Set this freaking plane up for ground damage. You will not do poorly. Just be mindful of what's going on around you. Normally I'd say do you agree with my assessment, but I'm going to tell you, you have to agree with it. So many people tell me how much they dislike the Mosquito, dislike the Hornet, um, and to a lesser extent dislike this plane. And I truly believe if you focus on your air to ground abilities with the Mosquito and the Hornet and this plane, you, uh, you know, focus on avoiding direct engagement with enemy airplanes that can kick your ass. Um, you will have incredible success. Those two planes also do well against bombers. This plane just completely melts down enemy aircraft, no matter what they are, as long as they don't uh, outmaneuver it. Um, you will have great success. Go all in for your air-to-ground armament. Do it. You won't regret it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this uh, helps. If you're struggling on the tier 6, 7, 8 on this line, hopefully this um, is something that will help you out. Keep grinding, though. You will eventually get to the Javelin, which is an absolutely wonderful plane as well. Um, and all these planes are great versus bombers. Um, and considering the meta right now, there's nothing wrong with that. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day. I will see you out on the battlefield. Bye.